And now it's my great pleasure to introduce Matt Ketman, our Southern California editor, who will present the Wine Star to an American wine pioneer. Matt? When Nicholas Nicky Hahn bought Smith & Hook Vineyard in California's Monterey County almost 40 years ago, the, re the region's reputation for wine was in the dregs. Nicky didn't know much about wine, but he knew that he had to do something drastic to protect his investment. So he began mapping out the Santa Lucia Highlands Appalachian. It was approved in 1991 and is now considered one of the best places to grow Pinot Noir and Chardonnay on the planet. Along the way, Nicky grew Hahn family wines into an international power player. Today, their wines are distributed in all 50 states and 20 different countries. His family farm is more than 1,000 acres throughout Monterey County, and they produce everything from luxury-level Pinot Noir to affordable Cabernet Sauvignons, offering some of the best values in the market today. My name is Nikki Hahn, and who I am is a destination I've been looking for all my life. When we started, I wanted to create a Cabernet Sauvignon house, as a European Cabernet was the only uh, grape varietal that we knew of in Europe emanating from the United States. I'd never looked backwards, so I had, in essence, no idea of what I'd achieved. I was always going forward. And the reason I decided to, to try for an Appalachian was the fact that I'd attempted to sell my wines to the very upmarket uh, organization, and they told me in no uncertain terms that never would a good bottle of red wine emanate from the, from the Salinas Valley. It is a region where the people who are involved are all uh, professionals. It is, as a whole, now renowned for vibrant wines, much more so than virtually any other in the state of California. Being a family already defines what you are. And being a family-run organization means that you can be far more flexible than any of the big companies. And the big companies very often simply lose their identity. And with Smith & Hook, Hahn, the bone shaker, we have one people are recognizing us. We're working on changing the perception of our company. And we do that with quality, in, with the image that we're projecting and with who we are. Unfortunately, Nikki Hahn is unable to join us tonight. So the Wine Star Award for American Pioneer, Wine Pioneer will be accepted by his son and daughter, Philip and Caroline. I know that he is all, with us all here in spirit. He would have so much wanted to be here in front of you today. So I shall read his remarks. He has just two minutes to explain why he is the most improbable of recipients of this award. So he shan't even try. Not being of the business, there was so much in 1979 not to understand. Why were the wines of Salinas Valley so underrated? He had tried many that were most pleasing. Why was reputation of red wines from the area so atrocious? It was so bad in those days that the buyers for the Mervin Pick chain in Switzerland refused to even try Smith & Hook, as he could not put a thousand acres into an overhead bin of a Swiss airplane. He had to get out of the region while staying put. The answer was in the creation of a new AVA, one with no baggage, where Rhines would be rated on merit. Thus, only two years after arriving in California, he spearheaded the creation of the Santa Lucia Highlands. Very soon he realized that the newly created appellation would be ideal for Chardonnay and Pinot Noir, both requiring less heat summation degrees than Cabernet does. A phone call from our consulting winemaker, Marinico, underscored his intention. So he pulled 650 acres, and when you say bet the farm, he actually bet the farm, 
or perfectly healthy Cabernet vines and replace them with the just two mentioned varietals. And I was 12 at the time, and they gave me a glass of Pinot Noir, and it was about so large. And I pointed my little bony finger at our then winemaker and said, this is really good wine, we should make more. <laughs> and uh, I did get started early drinking wine, and the side effects are less bad than they say. Some reputable wineries preceded his planting in the SLH. Many have since followed. Now we are judged, as he expected, primarily on merit. The reputation of SLH is constantly strengthening. The ABA is probably the most exciting in California because nowhere else do you have a Burgundian climate blessed with Californian sunshine. This is due to an underwater canyon, the size of the Grand Canyon. It drops several thousand feet right off the beach. As an aside, traveling south in the 101, you will see on your right miles and miles of vineyards interspersed with old farm buildings, an idyllic painting worthy of Norman Rockwell. Today, if one considers planting Chardonnay, two appellations in California come to mind, Russian River up north and Santa Lucia Highlands. When discussing Pinot Noir, invariably Oregon and SLH will be mentioned. He predicts that the reputation of the SLH become ever more a magnet for new wineries. The AVA is small, only the size of Manhattan, some 7,000 acres. He also predicts that the flash detente system, a miraculous machine that has been used in France since 1992, and he first imported in 1999, will become an accepted tool in winemaking. It can eliminate off flavors, facilitate barrel fermentation, and the list goes on. Ours was designed in France, the parts made in Italy, and finally assembled by an Argentinian crew in California, and that was miraculously on time. There are seven such machines now in California, the largest belonging to Gallo. Winemaking in California will be changed forever once this machine will be accepted as a legitimate tool, and it will. Now, <clears throat> he would absolutely, in spirit, love to thank you, Adam, and your crew, and especially thank whomever believed that if you take a Swiss gnome and turn him into an American vintner, he should be royally awarded. He has a thought to ponder. If you ever wish to get involved in an industry you know absolutely nothing about, which was his case, your attitude will determine your chances of success. And if there is one thing he ever taught me, that hopefully I will be able to teach the next generation. It's that anyone can dream. You can dream in a gulag, you can dream in Paris, and you can dream in Zurich. But if you wish to translate these dreams into reality, you had better come to the United States just like he did. <laughs> when he gets to see this video, I hope he will know that it has been an honor to be his son. Daddy, this is for you. Thank you.